Well, hello, it's Jim and Esmir. Welcome back into From the Depth. I heard this rumor that uh, Hessian heat shells may deal more or less damage dependent on the speed the shell have. And that's completely new to me. Instead of asking anyone, I thought that we will just do a test and see if this is a thing. Maybe it was a thing. Maybe it's not a thing anymore. Maybe it's a thing since recently. Maybe it's always been a thing. Maybe it's important. Maybe it's less so. So we're going to test if the same heat or hair shell with different speeds can damage the armor in different ways. Now this is a little bit embarrassing. I obviously were, uh, asked for too many likes. Uh, like this video too, by the way. <laughs> Please help me. Yeah, but the previous video, the Turian Undaunted class, I said that if this video gets 100 likes, I will release the battle carriers. There are 30 likes missing. Um, and I don't know what to do. I asked for too many, but <laughs> I'm trying to uh, stand up to my words here. So it's like, uh, just put in 30 more likes so I can release the damn thing to the public. Yeah, all just kidding, but um, if you would want to like that video and this one, of course, uh, the Turin Undaunted is a spaceship thing. Uh, if you would like that video and this one too, it uh, would of course help me very much and I'd be very happy. So um, yeah. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do a big, big um, heat shell, like this. Uh, we're gonna begin with a heat shell. Whoops. Um, no, no I'm, I'm kind of clicking the wrong buttons on my keyboard here. So here we have a heat shell, very nice. Do like this. Can you fire? Apparently not. All right, now we're working here. So uh, this is its uh, like current speed. I, I think I thought we were working. There we go. And it deals damage like this. You know, we test uh, where you should have your spawn liner last time. Uh, and I won't spoil anything. Go watch that video if you want to know that. <laughs> also because I don't want this video to be uh, overly long. That was more, that one was an hour. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm trying to be more um, efficient in terms of speed. All right here, uh, so let's see here. If we have this at say 600 meters per second. I'm gonna repair all and we're gonna fire a shot. It deletes the block behind it. So basically we are leaving the, we're only changing speed using rail. So we have the same kind of payload, but at different speeds. So at uh, 600, all right. Next one. Why are you so slow? God damn it. Okay, we missed that one. It destroys one block behind it. All right. And I don't know, maybe it's only for Hesh because I know that Hesh has some thump damage thing going on there. I wonder if this kind of APS, it's, uh, we should, the fire rate is limited a little bit here. No just slow whoa all right this one didn't get through at all it just didn't oh right um, we should probably have the heat penetration factor to one two um, yeah of course inside this menu this is probably something we should look at too uh, here we have the, the shell so we have a rail draw stat and we can of course see here that we have expected kinetic damage uh, for even though this is a shaped charge um, we get some kinetic damage going on here. Expected armor pierce is really low, but I wonder if it if it matters. This 1,400 with two uh, armor piercing values. I wonder if it matters. I'm gonna check that out. Expected. Okay, so uh, 2917 at minute noon. 2917. So it seems that the fragments down here, they are not affected. The explosive damage there is not, but there is a kinetic part of this damage here. So I wonder if it kind of uh, gets in there too. Okay, heat penetration metric 60, frag count. If we draw that up. Seems to be the same. Kinetic damage there. Yeah, so the kinetic damage, of course, uh, is the only thing that's getting changed. Okay, good to know. Let's try with the heat penetration factor to something higher like this. 
All right, finally. I don't know what was wrong with this thing, but if anything just doesn't work for you in from the depth, uh, try to just go into E menu, like the menu to take this force out of play and put it into play again, and it's probably fine. So uh, we're back and we changed the heat penetration metric factor to one. We know it should deal more kinetic damage when it's faster. We have set this to be a measly speed of say like 500 meters per second. That's kind of the slowest heat um, I've seen people use. We can see there, deals damage. Oh, it didn't destroy the block. Oh, look there. Interesting. Uh, J, sorry. <clears throat> there we go. Right, so it, it gets through, but it doesn't get through the armor here. That's pretty interesting though. So at 500 meters per second, we can see the fragments are... It's like they shouldn't be affected by this, should they? Because if we look at this metric, um, if we look at, here we have the kinetic damage, but the kinetic damage shouldn't matter because here we have the heat penetration metric, 60, and if we have on zero rail stat, it's the same. It should not matter. It's like the fragments that get spawned here. It's like they somehow inherit the speed um, of, of the projectile. So now we're shooting again, uh, but it took two shots to get through the, further, for the armor at the outside there. So if we boost this to max, whoops, um, which is, yeah, one point. So we can get it up to 1,300 meters per second. So we're going to do like this, max speed. It seems to do the same damage, doesn't it? It does. It doesn't seem that speed matters. I wonder what happened since the, the shot before then. This is kind of weird because we are getting loaded up pretty fast, so it's not this. All right, so basically, if we just repair this thing, do the run again, so this is at max speed. You know what we should do? We should get some final results here. Damage debugging, projectile, uh, explosion, melee thump, yes. Okay, so, now, up to test. Make sure we have uh, the new shells. Fire. 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 Alright. So, we're going to check these values here. So, if we go through the metrics here, we have some kind of detonation trigger. Runs out of kinetic energy, runs out of kinetic energy. We have some super tiny explosions going on there. And if we go up here, we have, let's see here. I wonder why are these markers <laughs> all over the place? All right, this, this, is, this is like a mess. Okay, so if we look at this, uh, heat frag release. Like there is of course some kind of different units going on here. Uh, like we have some different small variations but unless I take this and somehow export it in some data sheet, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So if there is a difference between these ones, it's kind of small. So let's try with an, an, another shell speed then. This was uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, railgun, let's see here. This shell went out at 1300 meters per second, which is decently fast for a, for a shell like this. Um, explosion damage. Okay, so they got a little bit of explosive damage there behind them. But too little to actually matter. And it's like 200 millimeters. It's not a small shell, this thing. And I know some of you will say like, oh, everything under 400 millimeters is a small shell because I only make 2,400 2, RPM, 500 millimeter cannons. And I'm like, yes, okay, but you know, um, everyone, so, some people are building small ships too. <laughs> yeah, so, um, <laughs> I, I'm looking at you, Asusa. has <laughs> been building some pretty big ships. Anyways, we should be looking at, um, 
the values when we go and slow down the speeds a little bit here. I just want to see. So the shell, the shell kind of, we, we can't see the speed it actually had, but well, it doesn't matter. We can trust these values that are in here. I forgot I had some uh, energy like saved up for accuracy, so we'll try again, but with the max shell speed we can have, which is actually 1600 meters per second. And we seem to have gotten some similar, similar results here. What do we have here? Out of kinetic energy. Doesn't delete the block behind there. Projectile. Can check these. Block health. Seems to be the same variation. I mean the, the damage they did. The, the block seems to have the same color as it had. When it uh, got real like. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be a damage with heat so far. Now we're going to go and try the slowest speed. We can probably muster up here. Which I guess to still hit a target would be kind of 400-ish meters per second. Otherwise it might... Actually 300 is probably fine before it starts to drop too much. So something like that. We can do some accuracy to maybe straighten it a tiny bit. Who knows. Right. So for the save of it we're gonna do like this and run the tests again. Bam! God, that's a slow shell. But um, Yeah, and it looks like we're having the same results here. Uh, as you can see here, we have the same... It looks like the same variation. It's of course always 16 fragments. And stuff like that. And... While I can't like absolutely say there is no th there is a difference in damage, there is no noticeable. I can say this: there is no notable difference uh, when we're throwing a shell 200 millimeters at a normal um, normal variations of the uh, air gap armor. So yeah, we can say that for practical reasons, it seems to not matter at all. Uh, however, we can of course drag up the, uh, but it's gonna shoot through and if it's too strong, it's gonna shoot through anyways. But if we go in here, we can try a bigger shell just to make sure. Okay, let's try a larger heat shell, 400 millimeters. This is going at like 200 meters per second. We're gonna see if it even hits. We're gonna do like this or it actually hits. I just fired it so I know. Clear all. Bam. Doing like that. Bam, doing like that. Last one. Bam, getting through. Okay. So basically two blocks and some stuff damaged there. Boosting this thing up will get us to a speed again of 1600 meters per second, which is all nice. God, we need to do a little thing like that. Clear all. Set it to G. Far high speeds. Oh, really? No. All right. It deleted a block there. We must uh, we must uh, check that. That was pretty interesting. Okay. So if we go back to G. Okay. Now we're back to. So that was just some normal deviation. It damages two blocks and then destroys two blocks and damages the third. And sometimes it um, it gets the third one too. But it seems to be normal deviation, so it seems that it doesn't matter. We can conclude that the speed of the heat shell does not have a practical damage difference. Even though we have a difference in the kinetic damage here, the AP value is so low that if it even inflicts damage to the target, it's too small to actually matter. Well, let's go and exchange this for a hash shell like this so we are going to whoops sorry okay there we go so let's fire the hash shell and this is at uh, max speed let's just check that again it is the rail gun sorry there 1600 meters per second pretty fast for a hash shell 
far like that. God, this is a mess. Ooh, it detached this entire section. Bam, dealing damage like that. Bam, dealing damage like that. Ooh, almost got through this one too. Pretty cool. And if we look at this stats here. Oh, look here, expected kinetic damage. I wonder, did we? Did I just miss that with the heat one? Oh yeah, <laughs> there is a modifier 0 0.1. <laughs> oh, oh wait, 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 this is, this is a shaped shard head, okay, good, we should squash head, okay. Yeah, uh, I totally missed that little section, X 0 0.1, so there is a kinetic damage, but it's so small and the AP value is, of course, insignificant. But anyways, if we look at this thing here, kinetic damage, when it's no speed, it drags up when it's higher speed. I like this, so then we can go down here, expected explosive damage. All right, explosive radius. And it's of course not affected by this. Well, we have a Hesh spalling base damage. Okay, 192,000 at full. And if we drag it down to zero, it seems to be the same here, okay. KD value here, it's of course different, dependent on but it's also a modifier there. So it looks like it shouldn't matter the speed of the uh, of the shell here. But we'll see. We'll run the tests again here. Bam. Just to make sure. Yeah, we seem to have gotten the same results here. We have two ish two blocks getting destroyed in the front and uh, some damage to like one, two layers behind. Right, so if we just drag this thing down to, or actually we can increase the accuracy, to say, I don't know, 160 meters per second, maybe 300, just so we can even reach it, not dropping too much. We can see if there is a significant difference or not. By the way, if you want this platform, and there is a download link on, on my workshop page, uh, from you can reach it from the last video or, or just YouTube if you want this platform. Um, and I share some things, <laughs> some builds. Uh, oh, and my patrons, uh, they access, uh, they can access <laughs> all of my files and stuff like that. So we of course need to say a huge thanks to the commissioned officers in the army of Jimidism, which is of course Captain Scoobrox, Commander Eugene, Lieutenant Asteria, powered by Great Talaras and LCG Canyon. And also our stellar Jimidist uh, on YouTube membership LCG Canyon. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel. So let's continue with our tests here. God, that one really... <laughs> All right. What was happening there? Okay, yeah, it seems that since this, the shell kind of drops a little bit. It doesn't really, does it? But it feels the damage has a weirder pattern now. And it didn't, hmm, who knows. Okay, so I just ran it again. And we can see this data, hash thump 9752. And we have it there. So we have this thump damage there, basically digging in two blocks of damage. And it's decreasing when we go through structural blocks, the uh, thing is, you know, uh, changing a little bit. But basically, it could destroy, destroy this entire little, um, like, beam slope layer there. And with, uh, yeah, we should remember, we should remember this number, just check it again. But I think I remember it from the ammo controller, right? So it shouldn't change, like, this is at low speeds, right? Um, and it's like the same value as, yeah, 9,000, there we have it, 752. And it's the same value we see here. Some, no, yeah. Sometimes uh, it is not quite that, uh, it varies a little bit, so you never know. But let's try the fast speed again, just so we can have a direct comparison. Make sure this is actually, this is actually, uh, so that the speed doesn't have a practical difference. And there we go. That one got a real nice hit there. All right. So um, what do we have here? We have a thump entry point, 9,752. 
and here we have the same and the same. So the values are the same. Now this is just lucky we removed the like this and this block so the connection points are gone. Um, but the damage seems to be basically the same. Like thumb, like <laughs> Hesh is moving all over the place so it kind of matters a little bit. The only thing, it's like this thing, did it get through? I, one thing I need to test however is to see if we can turn on, uh, turn off damage debugging here. So much to clean up all the time. Let us repair this thing. Okay. So sometimes the, dependent on in what angle the fragments spawn, sometimes they get through, sometimes they're not. Um, but it seems in all practicality, uh, the uh, speed of heat and hash shells does not have a significant impact on the uh, actual damage it deals. Now we have this little kinetic area here, but it's a super tiny modifier. And it seems that this modifier is so small that it doesn't seem to differ at all when we're shooting at metal. So yeah, then we know that. I hope that you thought that this was a little interesting video. And uh, before we close off, I must show you two of my new turrets, which I have been designing. And again, if you want to support the channels, these turrets are... Uh, I don't know if I'll release them publicly later, but um, these turrets are, of course, available for all our uh, patrons. Okay, um, so where do we have it? Actually, I'm gonna th I'm, I'm gonna show you three new turrets because they're cool. Here we have this one. <laughs> this is my bolter. Uh, we can actually do like this, so we can see a little bit better. I've been working a lot with decorations, as you can see, and uh, it uh, it's pretty nice. Let me load it on a clean platform, by the way. Listen to the fantastic sound of the bolter. Uh, now, when I, uh, I did a video before when I went through all of the sounds for the APS cannons and they have different sounds and I thought that this one, uh, I don't remember the exact span, but it was like 406 or something to something else and this is within it and I, I just thought of the 40k bolter so I thought I'm gonna make a big ass cannon that uh, has an automatic fire, pretty fast, fast firing shells and I came up with this design. And as you can see, uh, it is uh, pretty... I think it looks cool. Uh, you can say what you want. And I'm trying a new armor scheme tactic. And you can see it's open from the backside and all the armor is put in the front of it. So we actually have some pretty thick armor, basically integrated spore liners and all that stuff. And it's empty behind because the re it's reasonable enough to assume that the damage would be coming from the front. And yes, there are some explosion leakings and some fragments that can come, but I have been uh, putting in some uh, emergency ejection defuses here, so it should be fine. Inside here we can see we have an armor piercing head with a secondary heat shell and at 425 millimeters, this, uh, it matters. This particular shell has a uh, squash head, so it deals some squash damage. You can see the shells aren't very long, but they are of course rail assisted to deal some extra damage. And the last one is a skimmer tip uh, with EMP damage, and it has a visible tracer just to help all the other shells be a little bit more accurate. And we are shooting at this poor little thing. Of course, uh, many of these shells are just uh, shooting through this. Um, and it's actually more set up to aim below the uh, waterline at the targets. This is too much of a soft target. This turret is fairly expensive too, I should just, uh, I should mention. Rolling in at uh, 215,000 materials. Now we have an even more expensive cannon and this is the Army of Jimidism Mini Bolter APS. And it uh, it's user the uh, it uses the bolter 125 millimeter rounds, so a kind of uh, yeah I built the sandblaster, and this is a belt fed one, so we should update it. You can see it's pretty boosted. It has the same uh, it has the same turret. I was so happy with my turret cap. I don't know what you think, but please write in comments. But I was so happy with it. I wanted to have two different turrets with it. Uh, so I designed this little thing and it's again uh, one is hash, 
One is armor piercing heat because this 225, it's not small shells. Uh, and the other one is um, a disruptor, shield disruptor. It's good to have on a uh, sand blaster like this. And it of course shoots at um, 2034 RPM. So it's pretty quick. And uh, it's doing some sandblasting. It's expensive turret, yes. But I'm looking forward to see what type of damage uh, it can deal. Damn. And by the way, if you are one of my seven patrons, uh, I just want to... Or six it is, maybe. Uh, I just want to... I can count, but... <laughs> I don't know numbers. But anyways, if you somehow missed that you can download these files, I've uh, posted it in the special little uh, Discord group where only the commissioned officers are. I posted a link to it there. And if you don't use the Discord, because I know one of you don't, uh, then the post is via patreon.com. If you just go into patreon.com, it's basically the pinned post. Uh, and that pinned post uh, does contain the latest iteration of my files. Um, and I update them, as you may know, like once a month. I put it in the Discord and on, on the... And sometimes I post it on Patreon too that I've updated. Anyways, the last turret I want to show you is the Army of Gymnasium Arcubalista Invictus. And it is a APS rail assisted kinetic rod 480 millimeters cannon. And it comes in with a small cost of only 67,000. You do, however, have to have an insane amount of rail to power this thing. This is, this is like the max penetrator. And as you can see, I spent too much time on decorating this thing. I even posted a little picture on Reddit. And uh, people liked it a lot. I think it's uh, they liked the design. Uh, I can say that. And as you can see, it has an unusual design. And the funny thing with this is, um, I was building this while listening to fun facts about uh, Fallout One and Two and Three, which I'm going to play sometime on the channel. But anyways, uh, that doesn't matter. I may think it have uh, helped me a little bit with the design choices. It kind of reminds me of that. Uh, 1940s uh, diesel punk esque aesthetic. In any case, as you can see here, um, I tried to do some recoil absorbers or something that looked like it, and I wanted to have some chains to kind of drag it back. It also has the principle that it's not so well armored from the back and a little more armored in the front, and the head is, is of course heavily armored. It's of course quite susceptible to some types of damage um, and the design itself, I actually made it from a practical standpoint. So the firing piece is back here, just so the barrel doesn't get too long and it's still super long. Yeah, and uh, this is, um, this is, let me see if we can check this thing. If we go in here, we can see it's doing like this. Railgun, it uses the maximum amount of power, so the, sh the shell, even though it's 420, uh, 480 millimeter, it's uh, almost getting up to 2000 meters per second. So it's a pretty hefty round, and the, the, uh, the shell is one 18 part shell that's only sabot heads and solid warhead bodies, and the reason behind this thing is that I want to be able to shoot through basically anything. So, uh, you know, even though you may have several meters of heavy armor, this thing, this thing should be able to shoot through. And that we of course, let's spawn, let's spawn a real brick. Let's spawn the stronghold is a proper brick. And here we are, damage debugging. Let's just record everything here, okay. So here we have the stronghold, let us fire. Can we like, shoot? No, the lambs shot it down. Now this has super cab, so we can shoot underwater, which is pretty decent. Somehow. And it's like 10 seconds between the shots. And there we go. 
you can see that this shell went through to here. So that was kind of many layers peeled off like that. We can shoot again. And now we can see we deal some real damage because we hit bomb, 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 bomb. And here we apparently had something important that absolutely blew up and destroyed the land system. And that should help us aiming for uh, higher up then, probably, if we had damaged the lambs. No. Did it bounce? No, no, no. Here, hit friend. So it shoots so fast, it's sometimes hard to even see where it shoots. I, I don't need to be fancy. I can just, you know, do like this. You do, you do however, need a couple of rail shards to fire this thing. Now, we, now it got lucky. Well, come on now. Stop bouncing. And that's why I want to pair it with a sandblaster that uh, deals some sandblasting capabilities. Alright. Got out. Sorry. Okay, now we're good. Let's see if it... Oh god, it, it bounced. If you didn't know that, if you don't have shields, uh, you must have shields. They're absolutely a lifesaver. But of course, uh, most of the shots will get through, and here we can see it got through... Oh, it almost dealt with these ones. What if we aim towards here again then? Who knows? But um, if we just aim a little bit higher, I hope we can shoot out this firing piece. Nope. Well, you can see it has some penetration capabilities. Here it went through going there. And I think cram is probably a good counter against this thing because um, Crams will, um, if you have several barrel crams, you will not be able to uh, damage the entire turret with like one shot, except if you hit the, uh, um, the what is it called, the turret block, then you can destroy the entire thing. And my thought behind this design was actually for it to aim below water, because if we aim below water, most people's lambs are not set up to even shoot at it, and if they do, they will be kind of weak anyways. Um, so, yeah. And that's why I have a super cavitation round on it. Wait, what happened? Did it bounce? Wait, what? Can it take a direct hit? I wouldn't have expected that. that this went out from it. Well, this shot went here, here, here. You can see it basically, it kind of doesn't shoot through the stronghold, but it almost shoots through the stronghold. And the fact that it can do that means that it's definitely over penetrating most enemies. It only gets stopped by a heavy armor block in the bottom here at the engines. Yeah. Well, I, I guess you've seen how this works now. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Now it looks janky when it aims down. But um, that's what it does. It's a big as sniper cannon and I hope to use it to be able to sync some very competent designs. Because if I've learned something, that's that the kinetic shells is best all around. Especially against players who actually know what they are doing and has put in the five years of constant playing from the depth that's required to even build something half decent. This is a crazy game, that's why we love it. And thanks a lot for tuning in to this little um, testing episode, and I'll be seeing you in uh, future videos. This is your host, Jimmy Desmond, we're signing out.